Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Pundit's Pundit. Why am I introducing the show? Well, number one, it's on a new channel, South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. Pleased to be joined by Candy Ebling tonight. Good evening, Scott. George Eichhorn. Good to be here, Scott and gang. And the big, and the big pundit himself, Jacob Christner, and uh, welcome to a new era here in Pundit's Pundit. Before you respond, I want to wish Denzel Snipes, hope he gets a little bit better. We miss him tonight, but obviously want to make sure he's better than ever when we redo this when we in about two weeks. So go ahead, Jacob. Oh, we miss, oh, we're going to miss his hype. He's the hype man. We know this part. <laughs> but no, I'm very happy to be, I'm very happy to have this, and I'm happy to have you, George. This is going to be great. When it's going to be good. And it's like, we got between you and Scott and everything, we got all this experience to be able to see. Because one of the things I like to do on Pundits Pundits is I like to show the new world and we can compare this. See, because we're here for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're all here for this new world. And it's like, I like to have the experience along with it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're going to try to provide you. But what is up, hype man? We miss you. Yeah, we, we do well you know the amazing part about it is we have good chemistry when we're on the sports we change on wednesday wednesday nights and when we brought george on for basket bros we certainly covered that era, era like a blanket so yeah. now we have an opportunity to do it here on arguably your best show your production pundit funded which has always been a dream of yours we know in the past that jennifer matthews lewis has been a part of it. We're looking forward to hopefully having her on. Well, yep. Candy, what can I tell you? She's an MVP in more ways than one. So to me, you know, our opportunity to have as many as six people, depending on who's available in a given night, because circumstances happen. And with my new role here as president of broadcasting for Eagle Communications, there might be time when I'm not here, but it feels good when you have a supporting cast like we have here, which we call our dream team, where you're not going to miss a beat no matter what happens, regardless of the topic, whoever it is. You know you have depth of disposition. And in addition, the one thing that's really good about it is we're going to provide a lot of audio providers that you may or may not have had in the past. So we want to get to as many people as we can, and that's our goal here. I mean, first of all, the show is first class because of the idea how you've done it where you where you know you pretty much talk about everything and you're a very versatile show our goal here is just to try to make what you have just a, a bit better oh and i appreciate it and it's one of one of the things for anybody that has not seen because i've been on a different network but it's one of the things about it with pundit is think about a i mean we wouldn't exactly have the production value obviously of the outside of the lines but we are a little more advanced than they are our thought process our everything it is not it's not just to have politics to have anything. It's just to have everything. Show the world. It's the new world of sports. It's not just meathead stuff. It's not just stats. It's the idea. Because we are getting into this world of the new. Of like the, we show, like for instance, today I showed the new Tennessee Titans on Twitter. The Titans' new $2.7 billion stadium. Bears will eventually have one. We're seeing these worlds that we had a couple of weeks ago. We had a subject on the it is i mean we have subject on sports exchange on the end of inclement weather eventually and just football and then all of a sudden tennessee shows theirs and there are there's another roof or a, uh, another roof or another thing that's just yep. the where life is going and i love being able to show these type of things Absolutely. well what's also good about this show too is i know every once in a while you've you've gotten out of sports here to go somewhere else so hopefully as we a lot of it is sports there'll be a non-sports related topic that we tie in let alone yeah. with the experience that we have on this crew between george and i you denzel candy you know and jennifer when she gets on but so you know and that's what's good i think the one thing i'm writing in my book now is you have to be very very versatile is what you have to do you yeah. cannot be a one-trick pony and of all the shows that I looked at when I joined them on Sideline Sports, Basketball Bros was a good show because obviously George and I lived it, so it was easy to talk. But this one here is what I consider the a version of like 60 Minutes 2020 Outside the Lines magazine format all rolled into one, which, mm -hmm. ma which makes this a dynamite type of an idea. And again, you're the one who created the whole thing. All we're looking to do is just make it better. No, oh, it's... It's the, I always look at it this way before we get on to our first subject. One thing about it is I had an older dad, but he never acted old. And the whole thing was, it was always looking forward at the next thing. Just I'm always looking at ideas. Did they work? Did they not? You see it. 
but I, he would tell you the stories of his old days, but it wasn't, but he always looked at an idea of looking forward and maybe I have gray hair, but I'm always looking at a forward life. And I love seeing what's going on with sports right now. Don't worry about the gray hair. I got it too. <laughs> I, hey, I'll, I'm not going to, unless I get paid a heck of a lot of money from a movie, I'm not dying it. I love it. <laughs> That's right. Well, I like what I have, even though there's a whole lot of it. That's why you think I put a ball cap on. So Candy, yeah, you're it. Candy, you're the reason for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like my dad growing up, my dad always says, I was the reason for his gray hair, but my siblings were the reason why he went bald. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, me, and meanwhile, her dad's nickname was Kettle Corn, so go draw that. Hey, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Let's get on to the first show. Sure. Absolutely. Well, Let's you know what? You take here. over from here and let me know when you need me back. Okay. You betcha. Oh, my Lord. Jamaica's World's Cup, the World Cup team. Wait a minute. Now, this is an interesting story, everyone. I love this. It's like years and years ago, I'd say probably about 15, 17 years ago, the Jamaican, I mean, as we get to this World Cup right now, Jamaica, the Women's World Cup team, the government was not going to fund them anymore. They weren't going to do it. It was done. There was going to be no team. Time goes by, Bob Marley's daughter gets in, and she saves the team. She saves the team, and they get there. And as time goes on here, guess what? This In this type of year, in this year right now, they're in the, uh, I don't know, it's like, I don't think Jamaica's in there anymore. I don't think they got knocked out, didn't they? Yes, they, they did. did. They lost yeah. the other night, knocked. too. Yeah. Yeah, they got knocked out. But, you know, something they got that far into the knockout round. But here's the interesting part of the story. It's they were, see, they were back in because of Bob Marley's daughter. But the, the government still didn't want to fund them. because They made the World Cup and they still didn't want to fund them. So the um, be, uh, soccer mom decides we're going to get in, do a GoFundMe, and fund their whole trip to the World Cup, their whole thing, food and everything. They made a pile of money, and they get to the knockout round. So, see, this is the world that we see. This, this is the thing. People, for everybody that talks about the misogyny of the quote-unquote United States, there's worse out there. There's worse out there. We can talk about the Middle East. We can talk about the, some of the African nations, and we can talk about what we're seeing here. It's like not one – imagine – Imagine the, uh, imagine the United States saying, uh, I mean, mind you, they don't need to. There's millions. Imagine the United States government saying they won't fund them women, but they'll fund them men. Oh, imagine gosh. what Twitter would say to that. Oh, gosh. Uh, okay. And it's like they're, they're already, I mean, they're already enough of the idea of enough accusations of misogyny. But think about, imagine if they're doing that in the United States. It's like, but see, we're so, in, a, in this country, we're so in a bubble. You know what I'm saying? We're so in a bubble. We're in our own little path. We're all on our little coast. Yeah. I'm saying I mean, we're thinking the United States is everything, which means that everybody's misogynistic if the United States is misogynistic or everybody's this. We don't matter. You know, the United States is the worst. But I bet they don't know the rest of the world. And these are stories that I like to bring up because this is stuff that sh it's a beautiful story, but it shouldn't have happened. And I was going to ask this to you, Candy. What did you think? I was reading up a little bit about it, and I had never even heard them, about them. And it said that they failed to qualify in the 2007 World Cup, and that's when the government disbanded them was in 2008. In 2014, Bob and Rita Marley's eldest daughter was alarmed to know that Jamaican Soccer Federation had stopped funding the team completely. They want so they started funding it, which I think is just awesome because I think sports teaches you so many good qualities and not just I mean, obviously it's healthy, it's good for activity, but it's a good camaraderie that you you gel together and you learn things together. And I, I think we here in the United States, we're, we're very fortunate because we still have all these. We have Title IX. We have women's sports. You know, we didn't always, but we do now. And we forget that other countries don't treat women the same way. And it's sad. It's sad. As Me as a woman, like, I'm so fortunate that I got to play sports, that I got to play 
whatever I wanted, tennis, softball, um, any of those sports, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm so happy to hear that somebody else stepped up to the plate and helped pay for them so they could have a team and they could have a sense of belonging to something other than just their family. Absolutely. And, and I'm going to say, George, I'm going to ask you a question. You can go on after it, but I was going to say, what odds do you think that we'll ever see? I'm not talking about soccer, obviously. There are very, very, there's so much wealth with that now. But as far as any other sport that a woman's team, you know, that there's going to be something to do that in the United States or any other country. What, do you think there's going to be more of that or do you think that's a one-off? I'd like to think that there's going to be more of it. Um, you know, basketball is so popular all over the world. I mean, you know, they've done a great job, FIBA and the NBA and uh, USA Basketball. I would think that one, but this one really, really struck a raw nerve with me for just what Candy said. The fact that there's several countries that are backwards, they won't allow the women to be athletic, they won't allow the women to form a team. And this was a great story. I'm so glad this is my first show with you guys. You picked a great topic. Um, you know, their nickname is the Reggae Girls, the Reggae Girls. And the fact that even as uh, Wayne here, Wayne Weinstein made a point that they only gave up one goal. Okay, let me read it there. A former high school player of mine played for them through Marley's daughter's time. They got eliminated, but gave up one total goal throughout this tournament. Yes. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Here's the scores, guys. 0-0 zero, zero Brazil, 0-0 zero, zero France, 1-0 one, one nil, they beat Panama, and they lost to Colombia 1-0. I mean, this is, this is, you know what this reminds me of, guys? Come on. The Jamaica bobsled team. Remember at the Winter Olympics? Yep. And all the hoopla they created? Of course, that was all mm -hmm. men. But getting back to your point, I hope it does. It, you know, Jacob, I hope it does set a pace for other sports other than soccer. I mean, we all know, like Candy says, the United States has so many things. We take so much for granted on all these teams. We always have the largest number of Olympic athletes you know, obviously that are going to the to the summer and the and the and the winter games. But I mean, I'm telling you, I I would love to see breakthrough, breakthrough by the women in other sports around the world. Basketball, I mean they already are they've already broken through obviously tennis is a long time sport. That's an individual sport. Golf is an individual sport. But I would think basketball hockey's come on as you guys know very strong around the world. And the US learned a valuable lesson, guys. Uh, you can't take any of these teams for granted. You can't take any of those opponents for granted. And unfortunately, our girls did not even make the, uh, you know, the elimination round. Yeah. You know, the thing is, the, the biggest thing is, this is what happened. The, the thing, this is what people do not understand. I always, see, I always bring this up with fans that when you act like, I call it an emotional nitwit, <laughs> and you get a, I call it that. When you go, when you act like an emotional nitwit in something as simple as sports, the politicians that are lunatics can slip right under the, the path. Yeah. And you want to know what go? And I'm just saying, oh, I, and I'm going to say it whether we like them or not or anything is irrelevant. This is the point. But a Donald Trump slips right under when you allow emotion because he lives off of it. And this is what I'm also saying is when you are forgetting about women's sports and you get that stuff, then you get the Leah Thomas stories and you get those. And then it takes a Riley. Um, let's see. I'm sorry about the, the candy Riley, uh, you know, the swimmer. Uh, um, yes. Uh, oh. what no, is I know. I it, can't, it, it, it lost my, it slipped my, it slipped my thing for a second, but she'll get that in a second. But it's like, but it takes a girl to have to try to fight, uh, to fight for women's sports. When we <laughs> do Gaines. things, <laughs> right again, thank you. Mm -hmm. It takes those things. It, women being successful in sports is not going to affect men. Men get 250 times the money, always, everywhere. You know, the, the wages, the everything, they get easily 250 times the money, even with it. It's not going to hurt men. They're going to take a dime away from the men. For women to get theirs, it's not going to. This is what they're, whatever the worries are and stuff. Here's the thing, like with the women's soccer team, 
I ain't fond of, everybody knows this, I'm not fond of Reagan Rapino, but she sure didn't hurt anything like some people are trying to say. That team, that, that team had two straight um, the World Cups, and they get to a knockout. And that's the thing with it is, yeah, they got equal, but it didn't. The thing was, they were the team that deserved equal. They were filling stadiums before the men were. The thing, this is my goal, my point of everything. If they fill stadiums, anybody, men, women, whatever, they deserve the money. Period. So women get equal money, equal share. Good. They deserved it. It wasn't like they were playing in front of 18 people. All right. They're the ones that got the things before that. And Jamaica, I mean, the, the, the governments are going to have to get off their, you know what, because guess what now? Girls are athletic. Girls are athletic. I mean, this is 2023. Yeah. Girls fight in UFC. They're not just like the cat fighting either. They're fighting. They they shoot baskets like men do now. They shoot like men. They used to shoot like this. You remember I mean, Candy? Oh, they, yeah. I remember. Shoot, I remember. Yeah, they shoot like this. Now they're shooting like this. And I saw an eighth grader shooting like that the other day on the video. An eighth grade girl. They're stronger. So we're just going to have to get out of this mindset here. And those are the things. It's like, and it's like, you know, it's a different world now, George. Oh, yeah. I know it is. I'd be interested in knowing what Scott says, though. I know he's got to have an opinion on this. You know, I have to tell you, that's the longest I've been quiet in a while. So <laughs> no, no, no. Anything. I didn't know if Scott was going to get I didn't want to. I didn't want to um, throw it out. I, I did But it's like, go ahead, Scott. Sorry. I'm all right. No, no, no. Hey, listen, you're moderating, man. This is your <laughs> that's right. to be here. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, it doesn't surprise me. A guy like Jeremy Bolrick would say, I still miss a Lindry football league. So. You know, with that, when you consider the nature of this guy, okay, no, it doesn't surprise me at all coming from him. I, I, I have to tell you, it was pretty entertaining, but all kidding aside, yeah, I, I think there should be more of these opportunities, but there's a old saying called there's perception and there's reality, okay, period. Perception and reality. You'd like to see what it means, but you know what? I don't know. I hope so. Great story, you know, about the jet making women's world cup team but again you know one thing about united states title nine all that but we all know full well now this may seem crazy but when you bring up Brittany griner you know she found out they don't treat you the same way in russia than they do here so well the thing was I well, want to let me finish. hold on okay when you talk about Brittany griner and how they do things different you know every you know, all countries are created differently. That's all I'm saying. So whatever the rules are, are what they are. So go ahead. I just want to make sure that point was fresh off the top of my head. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, Jeremy, you have a point on something. And I'm always the first one to say exactly what you said. If the women are not making the amount of money, they don't need to get the money. I'm just saying the soccer team did. Soccer team more than earned it. They were getting the 60, 70, 80,000 people before the men were. And though, so they got that. And it's like the thing about the WNBA, though, it's the fact that it's like, yeah, they get low ratings, they get low everything. But truthfully, truthfully, though, it's like when you have a like, I mean, truthfully, I think about before like the 70s, for instance. I'll say this, Scott, the 70s NBA, right. When you see the '70s NBA, you remember all. Remember a lot of the low ratings. A lot of them were accused of fighting, very right. violent. You know, beating everything like that. And then Bird and Magic come around with this sweet-looking basketball, right? You know, and everything like that. You look at WNBA; they fight, they 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 scratch, they claw, they push each other a lot, and they show those highlights. That doesn't help your thing at all. It doesn't help your deal in the first place. And then you hear stories of Liz Cambridge. You know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about, Cambridge. You know what I'm talking about, Candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talk about Liz Cambridge and then stuff like that. And and then you're to, uh, talking about, and then we already, and see, I'm not going to put this on Brittany Griner, but then you have, those are the only stories that you get on WNBA is, um, is somebody having a mental issue or you go to Russia and you're getting stuck over. Right. That's not Brittany Griner's fault, but when that's the only thing, that's by design. When that's the only thing, that's by design to be able to, and it's like there's someone snuck in there to keep them down. You just have to keep playing, but 
truthfully, I think that I think there's a couple of players coming in, like a Paige yeah. Buchers, play, like, you know, a couple other players that's going to build WNBA way up. I really well, do. And, you, and, the, and, the, and the thing is, is that you got to understand the end. The WNBA is not independent. It is dependent on the NBA. It is dependent on many of the same owners, uh, not all of them, but many of the same owners, such as Detroit, when we had the Detroit Shock, wow. yeah. owned by Bill Davidson, the same owner of the Pistons. Now, I understand they've, there's a little bit more diversity perhaps now, but number one, the NBA is still pulling the purse strings, the hand strings, if you will, of the WNBA. But I think they've come a long way. I really do. They really have exciting basketball. Like you said, the ladies athletically, their shot selection, their shot taking, the grittiness. You mentioned about that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they're not going to back away from anybody in those games they play. So well, let I, me, yeah, let me add one thing to it. Before the WNBA came into play for the women, the end of the line was college basketball unless they played overseas. So Correct. now that you have the WNBA, you know, now they have an opportunity to take their amateurism and turn it into professionalism. I, again, I don't talk about the overseas. I'm just talking about the other things that led to it and the development of women's sports. So go ahead, George. I, I just, you mentioned something. No, no, I, 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 I pretty much just wanted to rest my case there. The, the problem I have too is there are not enough WNBA teams, you know, and I go Detroit. Okay. So they determined they couldn't support them anymore. Okay, fine. But, you know, you, they've got to get to a point where uh, there are more opportunities for the women in the WNBA. There are more opportunities for franchises. That's all I'm saying, because now we're seeing more of a more explosion, if you will, of interest in women's athletics and women's sports. So that's all I was going to wrap up with. No, you well, did fine. I just want to make sure I got that point. In. Go ahead, chicken. Well, no, the, the thing is, this is where I'm at. If WNBA feels confident just go up to the go up to Adam Silver and say we want to separate from you and go on our own. And I'm I'm not doing it to end the WNBA. I don't have that mindset. Right. I don't do it. I'm saying you want to you want to have the guts. You want to go Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone, go for it all. <laughs> you want to go for it all. Do it because yeah. you might you might just get to that level or you might go. But constantly sticking in with the NBA is just a loss leader for them. It's all it is. It really is. There's a li limited thing to it. You're just constantly sticking to the, the, to the big brother who's destroying you numbers-wise. And then yep. you're getting to this thing. Separate. No, I don't want them to go away. I'm not going to say it based on that. I want women. I want girls, little girls to dream too. I'm... I'm, I mean, just like Greta Gerwig just got a billion dollars for Barbie. Good for her because little girls can dream to do this now. But I'm saying go go Rocky Balboa, go Sylvester Sloan at 76, go all the way when you had 17 cents in your bank account. Go all the way. You might have you, you might go down, but you're not going it. You've gone as far as you're gonna go with the NBA helping you. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say we got a number. We've got a number two going on here. We got the good second thing. We, this is a great start of topic, I'll tell you. Oh yeah, I love this. It's like, and what do they have? And what do they have in common besides to Brady kicking the crap out of Tebow in the playoffs? <laughs> what do they have in common? Well, here's this: Tim Tebow now owns a the minor league hockey team in Lake Tahoe, in Lake Tahoe, which is hilarious. He, that the, the Mr. Christian goes to Nevada, <laughs> which that definitely need that definitely needs to be a cartoon somewhere. <laughs> Just to yeah. see him. go to Las Vegas, you know, blessing them all. You know, yeah. You know, but he goes into Nevada. He's in Lake Tahoe, and he's he's taken over. He's got himself, I believe, it's a minority share. Then, second of all, there is a second tier league. There's Tom Brady, a second tier soccer league. He's going the way of Ryan Reynolds. That did what he did with Wrexham, and he's got the second tier league in, the, I think, it's Birmingham. And these are the things right now that we're seeing. You remember how we talked about Moses Malone on, um, let's see, on Basket Bros? Right. We talked about uh, Moses Malone and Basket Bros. He, his knees were gone by year 11, and he plays 21. 
<laughs> just and he, by the end, by the end, he's at five minutes a game and two points a game. This yeah. isn't that world anymore. I mean, remember the, the athletics are completely different. Everything's completely different. Tom Brady ended his career in the playoffs and still over four thousand yards. He could have ended his career at five thousand yards when he didn't leave, but that could have been five thousand yards ending your career like this. This is the new world we live. And Tebow could have easily just been bitter after the way that they treated him in the NFL. But all he's done is help create a couple of movies. He's got some restaurants, and now he's having ownership in teams. He's become the business. This is the new world of business, and if an athlete goes broke now, it's their fault more than the uh, more than the uh, education, the lack of education that the money that these players used to have. So I want, I'm going to start with you, Scott. What do you think of all this? Well, number one, okay, Lake Tahoe is a great place. Once upon a time, I was married there. And one of these days, I'd love to take Candy there because, in my opinion, it's heaven on earth, okay? So Lake Tahoe isn't the, wor Lake Tahoe isn't the worst <laughs> place on the planet. Of course, I Lake don't Taco know Lake Tahoe, better. but I might create <laughs> that to go it. ahead and um, patent that. Who cares? You know, I'm dealing with all the – here I am, folks, out here getting ready to have – surgery on my back and i'm as humble as you can be man i don't even care so you know but all kidding aside if i had a daughter i would set her up with tim tebow he's a model citizen doesn't get into trouble was a pretty good college quarterback and had he been smart enough and had he have gone to jacksonville instead of being sold by rex ryan okay then maybe he would have had a chance to go ahead and play football in his hometown and I'll tell you why. I, I guess everybody's liking Lake Tahoe. My goodness. It's amazing what you can come up with when you're dealing with all kinds of medical challenges. You can get up <laughs> reality. But the main reality, but here's the deal. Okay. <laughs> Lake Tahoe. Taco. Now you guys got me all thinking about this stuff. But anyways, I don't know if there's such a thing, but you know what? We need to go into business and see if we can do that. I'll call up Dr. Edwin Hernandez. I'm sure we can. No, 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 no. He won't let it. him have Mountain Dew. Get a water. Oh, uh, but anyways, getting back to my real point, if there is such a thing, there's worse places to go than Lake Tahoe, okay? So if you're going to go there, you might as well go there. I mean, you know, it's just a great, great, great place, you know? And, you know, as far as Tom Brady, we all know he's got that competitive juice to own something, whether it's a piece of the Raiders, now this. So, you know, he's not, you know, he's done everything he can in the NFL, right? So let's see what you can do in the business world. Let's see if I can do, be another Magic Johnson and be an incredibly intelligent business person. And I just feel in my mind that I think what they're both doing is great, you know. So, yeah, I, you know, and I have a feeling that Tim Tebow is probably watching the broadcast now. In fact, I don't know, just like I once upon a time thought Jerry Glanville would leave tickets for an Elvis, but it turned out to be Gerback at, versus Presley, you know, in Memphis. And, all, and then he was going to leave them uh, – Lake Tacos for, for dinner over uh, in Atlanta or Memphis. Never mind. We're having fun with it. So. And, think, and think of it this way, though, is you, I mean, you think of Tom Brady. He's 46 years old. They keep comparing pictures of him and Blanda at 46. Right. Hey, oh. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. It's like, what's in that river? Is it brown? But still, it's, <laughs> but the, oh. but the but big issue is that you see them side by side. I'm like, Tom Brady took a, some beatings as a quarterback, even with. He took the sacks. He took everything. And he looks as young as he ever did. And it's not just skin care. Not, I mean, it is skin care, but it's not just every little detail. Things, are just, things were just harder in those days with Blanda's ears. It was. You have more education about diet. You have everything like that. You know Blanda spent all night drinking beer. You well, know he did from like, 20 yeah. years, like 15 years old on. Let me mention one thing that we should be, really, really be aware of here, and that's this, okay? Tom Brady has a television job coming up pretty soon, so you might as well mess around during this other season of freedom because when you have to go out there and broadcast and you're expected to be paid a lot of money to do a lot, might as well take that year off and go ahead and invest into these things. And, of course, maybe Tom is listening, Lake Taco. That's okay, well, too. Yeah. And, well, and what, that Brown River you're talking about, I'm sorry, now you got me on a roll, okay? Yeah. At least it's not the Nile River. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or if it's Tim Tebow, it's the Neil River. But the um, but right. the thing is, but the but the biggest thing is, you get Brady, and I've been saying this about Brady, big time. We can't 
you know, we cannot re- we cannot forget for any stretch of the imagination that he was had that three hundred fifty million dollar uh, contract by anything. But people wondered why he didn't go right away. And I have to remind people, I've got acting training. You understand? You guys have got TV training. You know, your TV, the, whether you've been on interviews or whatever. I've got this kind of thing. Tom Brady being interviewed for two minutes on your thing doesn't give you acting TV training. There's a lot to this. You know he's taking – I don't care what they're saying right now. Oh, he's going to get it started. I guarantee he's taking training in this type of thing with his um, with his video, with being on camera, on screen, what kind of makeup you're going to get, all that. You're getting all that. He's probably got – he's probably yeah. got one-on-ones with Stephen A. Who knows? You know, they'll teach you how to – what to do when the red light is on. See, timing. It's all timing. It's all that kind of stuff. So guess what? If he never did it, this is the type of stuff you do. He, he knows business. He's already got his Brady clothing line. So he's got that. So there's those things. And Tebow, the, overall, I think both those two are going to be billionaires when it's over. When it's over, it's not a question. Yeah, I don't know about that. But, um, you know, there's been a long history of athletes owning teams. Come on, guys. Mario Lemieux, the Penguins. Marshawn Lynch, the Seattle Kraken, Michael Jordan, the Charlotte Hornets, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, the uh, Houston Dynamo, David Beckham, Inner Miami. Mm-hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on. Magic Johnson, the Dodgers. This is nothing surprising to me, and I think it's good for the sports because the more you can involve your, your stars, or some of these weren't big, big stars maybe, but more of the stars that want to get back in and give back to the game, or another sport that they really love. Brady obviously loves soccer, okay? If he's getting hooked up with Birmingham, England, and and the football club over there, good for him. Uh, Tebow, hockey. I mean, I never thought about that either, but, you know, my gosh, maybe he loved the ponds. Maybe we, maybe when he was growing up. We don't know the whole story. I didn't read the whole story, but uh, Timmy might have loved the uh, uh, hockey when he was growing up or as a kid or went to a lot of games even in, uh, you know, high school or college. So I think it's great. I I mean, I would never want to exclude any former athlete from trying to become an owner if the numbers work. The numbers, the ownership numbers, the shares, the amount of money that they have to put in. I don't want any favoritism, guys, with these guys. No, you know, they should be treated every other, the same way you and I are treated if we wanted to lay out that kind of money. You know, I know they got a bigger name than us, and obviously there's a little bit of that going on. But all that being said, I think it's good for sports, and some of them are crossing over into other sports. I love it. I think that's great, and I really, really think that, um, you know, hopefully they'll make something of this. Uh, we, we've we had guys in Detroit. <laughs> Most of them have owned bars, I guess. Chris Jellios went into the restaurant bar business. Unfortunately, he closed down uh, both his Detroit and Dearborn, Michigan bars. And uh, so that that wasn't too good uh, or sold them off, uh, you know, and we've had other guys that have gone into that too. Eddie, Eddie Jockerman, the former goalie. So. You all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great comment by Denzel Snipes. So Disney presents Tebow Mania on Ice. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, I know. It'd be awesome. I love that. <laughs> I, I love that. I'll tell you this, and you're right, George, and I like that thing. But you know what I like? I love athletes over just simply businessmen dude, buying yeah. these. Because we brought this up with a topic last week. You know what I was talking about, Scott? The yeah. idea of, um, you know, the comparison between – it's a comparison between the American and European owners and profit and profit share. You know, the idea of profit. And that's what Americans are, which – talking you're talking to somebody who is a capitalist minded person but i'm also competitive and i want to win and i love the idea of i love a marshawn lynch going for it. he's got a super bowl ring you know what i'm saying yeah he's got a ring i love athletes going for it when especially when they have rings they're they're more likely to make the moves to try this i like i would love a i would love andre dawson to be a billionaire and go after it you know what i'm saying i would love for the cubs it's like these are guys that have won all their lives in some which way. It, it's like this isn't just a, yeah, you might lose money and everything like that. But if, if Florida, for instance, won, 
If Florida, for instance, won, remember with Heisinga, remember that, they sold off. If Florida yeah. won with a um, with like Dan Marina owning it, they're going to just do it again. That's what I'm saying, even if they lost money. Because th- th- these are guys that have done what, that's what athletes do. They want to win. They're thinking, they're like the European uh, side of like the Man United. They want to win. Competitiveness, exactly. That burning right. desire to win. Yep. And yep. that's that thing right there. And Candy, what do you think of this? Forbes estimated that Brady roughly got paid $525 million over his 23-year career. $333 million from playing contracts and $200 million from his endeavors off the field. That's a lot of money. What do you do with all that money? I know he's got kids. I know he's got an ex-wife and all that. You have to put it someplace. What not? Why not? What's better than resurrecting this club in Birmingham FC is almost bankrupt. They said they're not, they're not good. They have, they've lost money the last couple of years. What that'll do for that club, not only the money he invests, but just his name alone investing will bring others to that and bring more revenue in because he's such a big name. And let's face it. What else is he supposed to do? Is he supposed to invest in some businesses here in the United States? And I'm not saying you can't, but sports has been his life. Right. So sports is a great avenue for him to it's invest. In, in, ingrained, yeah. yep. Exactly. It's in his blood. It's in his DNA. So, you know, they're, they're talking about him in Las Vegas Raiders, and I think it's wonderful. I think when sports, people can give back to sports, that's awesome. What, you know why you go get a Tim Tebow for one team, a Tom Brady for another team? Well, you get it because it gets your feet in the door. Mm-hmm. It gets a foot in the door for like you know, like these sponsorships, everything. Who wouldn't want to talk to Tebow? Who wouldn't want to talk to Brady? Right. And it's, I mean, who wanted to talk to Magic Johnson? We talk about right. with the Dodgers. Who would? No, let's that's, say, that's let's a good say point. You know, Miami did it with with David Beckham, and now look at we have Lionel Messi and like who all else we have now. I mean, that's what you do. Well, there's the whole, um, here's the deal. There's the whole um, rumor of the commanders going back to Redskins if they want to do that. I mean, even Magic Johnson brought it up. Here's the thing. The current owner right now isn't going to get that alone. You got to get a, you have to go get a guy as personable and as charming as Magic that will explain the point. Yeah. That will he will be in that boardroom, and you know how much of a smile he's got. Yeah, that he yeah. he will go over there, and he will. You know what he will do? He will talk about we will honor those uh, we will honor those Indians every single Sunday. We will do this, we will do that if they get it back. And he then he's got to go to the after he would do that. That he's got to go to the Goodell and say to him, not not the Goodell. He has to go to the uh, USPTO and convince them to let them have their. Um, the trademark back because no one can use it. No one. It's it's empty. So he's got to convince them. He's got to, you don't, the owner right you have right now without Magic Johnson, you can't get it alone. Mm-hmm. If they want to do something like that, you get this. And that's why you get these guys. It's charm. It yeah. is, it is charm. It is the wink in the eye. It is smile. It's, there was a reason these teams have tough guys. And then there's a reason these guys have the charmers. There's oh, a yeah. reason that that's the reason they win titles because you got to have them all. It's like the A team in the '80s. You had one tough guy, one uh, one tough guy, one leader. You had one con artist, and you had one uh, pilot. Everybody has its own strength. You can't have twelve tough guys or twelve charm. You got to have something different. And that's why these uh, ownerships work because. Yeah, like when you have these different ownerships and you have this owner and you have the minority owner with magic, because you need him. Well, first of all, Jacob, don't forget Daniel Snyder was public enemy number one. He couldn't get a barn built there, let alone a stadium. Give me a break, man. A barn. You know, you know, you have horses at them, okay, that leak and eat Lake Tacos, okay, is what they do. So the reality of the situation is she couldn't get a barn built there. Yeah, Magic will get the Redskins name back. It's inevitable. You know, first of all, 
Josh Harris is calling the shots. Magic Johnson there. And if you can offer the Indians an incentive to show up, I get you, you got to remember one thing about that Washington situation, okay? Nan Snyder charged his fans to go out there and attend training camp. Oh, if first impressions made any difference, boy, that was the beginning of a big colossal disaster that <laughs> resulted in what we have here. That's yeah. what you got. So, you yeah. know, I know we can talk about, you know, athletes getting involved with business. You know, let me tell you, they're not just getting in with to have their ha hands in the cookie jar here. They're savvy business guys, a lot of the ones you're talking to. I'll never forget the time when Wayne Heisinga brought in Dan Marino, okay, to be the president of the Dolphins, and then Dan Marino couldn't handle it after two or three days because everybody thought he was a figurehead. You know what the problem with Dan Marino was? He had to work. Oh, my goodness. He had to work. <laughs> he wasn't a figurehead. Nothing against Dan personally. Arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. If it wasn't for the new NFL, I still think his 60,000 records would have been in touch untouchable because it was incredible quick, quick release but you're talking about guys like brady and tebow they're business savvy wow. magic johnson everything he does he succeeds okay so you've got and obviously there's other ones we're talking about hey michael jordan made a great investment with, with the charlotte franchise sold it for a good penny on the back end right he's a oh, yeah. guy who's business savvy mario yeah. Lemieux took the pittsburgh penguins from bankruptcy because I'll tell you, they had a lot of problems there and made them relevant. The list yep. goes on and on. Hey, you know what, Jacob? You can create a b new pundits pundits show here on savvy business owners that went on to do other things. And I've already li listed about a four or five of them off the top of my head. And we just had two of them. So I think know. about it. I know. You know what? We won't even cap your time at 48, not 49 minutes or 58 minutes. We'll go on because I know Ralph Williams is patiently waiting in the background whenever he knows that whenever we are done, we are done. Okay. So I'm not worried about length of this show because of the nature of the content that's available here to make sure that every point that we prepare for is touched. You understand where I'm coming from? That's why these subjects are the way they are and they make the show. Absolutely. And it's like, and this was a great one topic also. And I said we go to number three because this is awesome too. You know, you have this beauty. I mean, this is, you know, the Pac-12. Now, we were waiting for you, George. We were waiting for you on this one. Because oh. This was Scott. This was Scott saying, hold off until we get to you. Well. And it's like the Pac-12 deal. See, it started with Colorado leaving the Big 12, and then we waited for you. And then it all spread out. Oh, my Lord, we have all And now you got Oregon and Washington leaving. You waited long enough, and you got two more that are gone. It's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. I mean, guys, really, this 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 whole situation is becoming uncontrollable. Um, you know, Colorado, like you said, Jacob was the first. I mean, this is a conference that goes back 108 years, my friends, to 1915 when it was called the Pacific Coast Conference. This was the prestigious ending of the football season, folks. You talk about tradition. One of the teams from the cold Midwest playing one of the teams from the Pac-10 or whatever it was Pac called back then, Pacific Coast. In the Rose Bowl, NBC, all the country was watching the number one game of the day on New Year's Day, the Rose Bowl. I mean, come on. They had the uh, they had the American public mesmerized and and rightfully so. It was a matchup that was made in heaven that teams dreamed of that you work towards, whether your name was Bo Schumbeckler, Woody Hayes, or uh, uh, Terry Donahue, or anybody else. I mean, you know, you as a coach, that was the epitome of coaching excellence to be able to take your squad. George Perlis won a, won a Rose Bowl with Michigan State University Spartans. Nobody expected that. I mean, this whole thing now with the Pac-12, it's a money grab. Let's face it, it's a money grab. The networks are just all there to lay it out Hey, come and get it, guys. But they don't think of the ramifications. They don't think about the other sports, the women's softball, the men's baseball, the swimming and diving teams, and all the expense that's going to be. You know, what you really should have done, okay? If you really wanted to do this the right way, you would have just done football. Let the other conferences exist for all the other sports. Have your little football thing. But they won't do it because there's so much money involved in it. 
They won't do that. The universities won't peel that away because they know that that's the revenue generating sport among a couple others, baseball and basketball possibly. But all I'm saying is that, yeah, the Pac-12, this guy, George, I'm afraid he's got my name. Okay. Clayton Cuff, he's a dump cuff. He's a dump cuff to me. This commissioner that was installed July 1st, 2021, done a terrible job. Couldn't keep the couldn't keep the uh, the teams all in you know, all in check. Um, but again, you know, thanks for waiting for me on that. I'm anxious to hear what all of you say. Well, and my thing is, th I can say this part, and you're correct on all those things. We remember the Rose Bowl. It was beautiful. It was a, a wonderful thing. We're gonna miss that. I mean, the Rose Bowl as we know it. But here's the here's the thing. Also, Pac-10, Pac-12. We'll call it that now. Yeah, Pac-12, yeah. absolutely, positively, um, they underestimated the amount of competitiveness in these other leagues. They, every, it's like Kevin Warren, before he went to the Bears, gets this giant TV deal for the Big Ten. Right. The UNG. I don't even call it Big Ten because it's probably closer to 18 now. <laughs> but, but it's like... For the B1G, he gets a giant deal. SEC gets their own deal with ESPN. Huge deals. Pac-12 Pac starts bragging that they got this deal with Apple Apple TV. Like, and they have like a couple of games of the week or whatever. And it's like, that is equivalent of an old man that uh, found a uh, iPod and tries to get it to the kids and say, uh, they need to, see, I'm in the... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? See, I'm I, I'm in the new world. See, I, I got an iPod. You know, <laughs> but 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 see, which is the comparison of well, we were, and you know, it's like well, yeah, you're a little newer than you were, but you, you know, watch TV. Well, yeah, I mean, watch the news. You know, I mean, look at the, the look at the atmosphere around you. You're not paying attention. It's like that's the whole thing is, and yeah. the issue. Got, they got that issue. Then you get, guess what? And they could have easily, this is telling you how bad the, the, the commissioner is. This is the era of high end, high, high, high end offenses. Top notch. Pac-12 has them all, including the crappy teams. But you, and, the, and then the Big Ten, big, the big B1G, they have some miserable offenses, including Iowa. Which that that is not true. That can't even be true. It's so bad. But yet, well, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, hey, there's a lot of bad teams in 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 you, like you said in both these conferences. Uh, Big Ten's got some really dogs. You know, Rutgers being one of them. Maryland hasn't done much of anything. Look at how far Nebraska's gone downhill. I know Scott and I have talked about that over the over the several shows in the past. And uh, yeah, I mean. You know, yeah, we're talking prestige. We're talking about big money, but don't forget, there's a lot of inferior teams, <laughs> in putting it mildly, in both of these conferences. So it's not all gold if they have 18 teams. You know, but I, I go back to what Mel Farr told us on Mel Farr Jr. Uh, on Inside the Pigskin. You know, they don't care about tradition. You know, here's a guy that that, that played for one of these schools, and how hard how hard it is for him to accept it hurts him it hurts him to the core because of what ha what is happening and to see this happen especially with the USC and UCLA exodus that started you know several a year or two ago but that you know this whole thing just just stinks i'm sorry well no no there's nothing to be sorry about and it's like think of this part these people that get hired in these boardrooms now like let's say with the commission everything like that these fans that would love these jobs, I would just say with the Bears, they weren't around for 85. Mm -hmm. None of them were born. Most of them weren't born till 93. So they weren't around for 85. They weren't around for the years of the Rose Bowl. We just talked about this on the pre uh, professor and the pupil there, Scott. Got to do a little bit of a plug. Right. We talked about this on the thing. Michigan's going to lose their uh, all-type um, – they're all time the 1919 um the what was it said 1919 or something their pool hall right they're going to lose that to make a media center this is where we should be seen this is what uh, Pat Kovac should have seen the, the writing on the wall as far as competition and it's like you can't just go get an apple um, an apple tv deal and when everybody's getting these gigantic ones and same with Notre Dame 
Notre Dame, which I have been, I have been saying over and over and over and over and over. Everybody's been hearing me. To, they've been they've been living up that 1988 NBC deal and keep extending it. They need to get they need to get themselves a real deal. They were the one because they're so proud that they were first, but they're going to be last and dead if they're not careful because everybody's just blowing you by now. And, yep. and as far as you say, and I'll get to use candy in a minute. I'm sorry, I go overboard here. But the thing is, we we have to see what is now, now, and what is going to be forever. We're not going to have our Rose Bowl as we know it. We're not going to have these as we know it. Players leave after two years. It's not four years. It's not play. It's not you. It's not USC versus or. Let's see, UCLA versus Michigan or whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? It's not those games where you're seeing three years of Harbaugh. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it was three years of Harbaugh, but you get my point. It's not that anymore. It's two years and you go to the NFL. It's going to be a one and done soon. So, and, it, and NIL is going to be allowed in the first place. And now I've gone on like crazy. Candy, you go ahead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> tradition? What's Tradition. 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 Exactly. But who has it anymore? Still around the roof. Exactly. Yep. But but who has it anymore? I mean, tradition was in baseball, the there was DH in the American League, but the pitchers batted in the National League, but that's no longer anymore. That tradition's gone. You know, they had tradition of playing in the world series. I mean, they've played with that and like, well, who, like if the winner of the all-star game did this, then we did this and or that we changed tradition. And unfortunately the college scene is NIL has had a big impact on changing the college scene as we know it. And we all know that the sport that really drives college is going to be football and basketball. My question is, is going to be all those other sports like softball, like swimming, like some of those not as big sports, how this is going to affect them? Because right. now right. you're talking about, you know, you're no longer flying within a shorter distance. Now I could be flying one coast to the next coast. So they're really getting them prepared for like, let's face it, the NFL or any other major league team that has to fly from one to the other. My question is, is what does this do to the students and their studies? And yes, some a lot, a lot of people say, oh, well, they study on their phone. They can study on computer, <laughs> internet, or any, but how much do you really absorb when you're studying? Some people, maybe they absorb a lot, but I know a lot of people like hands-on like that that instructor in front of them to be able to come. Right. So what is this all going to do for that? That's exactly. part of my question. I mean, do I think it's going to pack 12 is going to survive? No, I don't think there's going to have to be at some point, like all of them together, or they're going to have to figure something else out. Like they're going to have to have like divisions like the NFL. Oh, you are in this division and you're in this division instead of, you know, this Pac-12, Big Ten, they're going to have to figure something out. But NIL and money is driving it. And you know something, and before I was going to get to you, Scott, in a second, I, I like I was bringing it up with Pac, how bad do you have to be? And yes, definitely, Ralph. How bad do you have to be as a commissioner when your teams, even the bad ones, Arizona's and all them, have a top-notch offense in an offensive world? And it's the defense, mostly defensive teams of the big t B1G kicking the crap out of you in business ideas. Yeah. And how bad are you? Because all you had to do is just show off all those offenses to these TV deals. I mean, you got to realize the Bears get laughed at because they still don't have a 4,000 yard um, quarterback ever in an era where there was 11 of them last year. So this. This is an offensive world, and the and Pac-12 blew it. Unfortunately, I would because I'm going to miss the Rose Bowl, but that was that. And I was going to ask you, Scott. 
All right, first of all, programming note, coming up after Pundit's Pundit, we have Fire Up, myself, George Eichhorn, and Ralph Williams carry the baton after Pundit's Pundit. So we know Ralph is there. I'm glad he's contributing in the chat room. Glad he is, because that way he knows where we are, are in the show, and he'll always remember that Pundit's Pundit is a great show leading into Fire Up. There you go. With that said, okay, let's break this down a couple of different ways. Number one, if the Big Ten is going to take any schools, they took the two L.A. markets, okay? So that's like Boardwalk and Park Place on Monopoly Board. They got <laughs> the two biggest properties. Yeah. If you want the next biggest properties, okay, which would be Pacific and the rest of them, let's just add Oregon and let's add Washington. Let's add Phil Knight's Nike money and let's add Seattle, okay? So you got the big four going over to the big 10, whatever you want to call it. Item number one. <laughs> Item number two, okay, and that's this. Let me tell you, to me, the Big 12 is a third world country. You know why? Because here's what they did. Let's just go to the American Athletic Conference and steal a few teams. Oh, if we're lucky enough, we'll go ahead and get Cincinnati. We'll get all these other teams here so that we can pad those numbers so we can eat Lake Taco. Okay, let's just do that and have more of them. So the reality of the situation is this, okay? The Big 12 knew it was in trouble. And as far as I'm concerned, okay, they had to scramble and they were ahead of the curve is what they were doing. That's just the way it got. Now, okay, good, glad to know that Jeremy Balrick has a point. My next predictions in this roulette is Florida State and Clemson will go to the Big Ten as we know it. Okay, forget 20. It's 10 until they change the logo, but you're on the right track. Then what do you have there? Miami goes to the Southeastern Conference. Then you have a set, set up with Miami and Florida, which the Gators don't want, but they may end up getting it whether they like it or not. Yeah. So then, so let's not yeah. downplay the significance of the fact that the Big 12 is relevant because they weren't even relevant when Oklahoma and Texas were in there. You tell me how relevant they were, okay? And now, here the, for, the Oregon coach is saying, let's talk about Colorado going to the Big 12. Oh, yeah. We got Deion Sanders. We got Shadur Sanders. Okay, we got we don't. The only Sanders we don't have is Colonel Sanders, for God's sake. So and they don't have Barry Sanders either. And him. But here's <laughs> the point. Okay, the Oregon coach makes a point. Okay, that you know what Colorado never won anything in the Pac-12. So you might as well go back to your old roots and go back to the Big 12. You won't say that they don't have a conference title because they do have them, right? And the Big 12. So let's not overplay the significance of how great the Big 12 is. Because in the end, you still have a two-horse race. You had the Big 10, which is a far better moneymaker than the SEC, which is probably maybe a distant second. And then you have the rest of them. Yeah. So, where, so where does the Pac-12 get their people from? Well, if they are in business, because they still have another year to shake this whole thing out yet. Okay, not everybody's jumping ship tomorrow. If, let's just say, the Pac-12, they could go to San Diego State. If they want to, they could get SMU. They can start to find out what big markets are left and try to get them. And all of a sudden, you add a few more here and there. Boise State is out there. So there are, you know, listen, you have over like 120 some odd big schools out there. You might be able to put together six or eight of them. It's not like this conference is falling apart tomorrow. It has the makings of falling apart tomorrow. So, And I know one guy that I met over at the Conference USA Championship uh, when FAU played named Merton Hanks, okay? Merton mm -hmm. Hanks, to me, is a shrewd business person, okay? So don't, as much as everybody out here in La La Land, no, we're not talking about L.A., La 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 Lake, taco land okay is out there okay don't sell this conference short you still you know and you know i personally think that if cal and stanford wind up anywhere they're not going to the acc they're going to the big 10 20 30 whatever you want to call it okay or they'll stay put now i don't have any sympathy for patrick chung at washington state because of what he did to my pal mike jarvis okay i've got no problem with that but the main thing is okay and I believe in my mind that I'm not saying that this conference is dead. I'm not. 
So all you people that want to put it dead before you're buried, okay, don't do it. I don't believe it. I just don't. So take off all the Colonel Sanders chicken that you want, okay? But the reality of the situation is the Big Ten got the best four in the Pac-12. They did. I don't care about the rest of them that are going anywhere. Doesn't matter. You got Nike. You got Seattle. You got L.A. Uno, dos, okay? You got the Trojans and you got the Bruins. And guess what? You get the Orange Bowl Stadium to play in at least, or Rose Bowl Stadium. So you still got the Rose Bowl, just not these, not the game. By the way, good point, Denzel. They would be no question. I personally, I wanted that. I wanted um, Dion to stay in the, the HBCU because they're obviously being forgotten like crazy, like I expected in the first place. If we don't see anything on ESPN or anything about HBCUs in comparison, we don't. And it's like they all it was all him, and it needed to stay that way. But think about this, Candy. You made a good point. Eli Drinkwitz brought that up about these kids. There was like these kids having to travel. What about their studies? What about everything? Of course, you know, he can say something like this because Missouri ain't good. But he, because he's not good, he's a good one to say that because he's trying to build a good team, which means you, this is also with academics, with everything. If you don't, if you don't have a 13 and 0, 14 and 0 team, academics going to need to be next. So he's got to think like that. If their academics stink and their team stinks, I mean, the whole thing goes down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Good point. And so the whole I just... point is, is, when we're talking about the cream of the crop, okay, you know what happens with the uh, uh, Big 12? They got the cream of the crap from another conference. They did. So don't, don't, I don't want to hear all this business about how good the Big 12 is. Yeah, okay. Let me see how many of them actually have a national championship in their pocket. What You know, what you call the leftovers. That's really what it is. And not yeah. often that you're going to be told you're going to have surgery, and yet you're firing here below the line. You don't really frankly care what it is. You know, yeah. I have, I have yeah. games out there in uh, Walmart called Operation, okay? And I'm and I'm talking an Operation about this college football mess because that's what it is. And you know what this is so good about it? It allows all of us to talk. And you know what? we got another show later. Good stuff. <laughs> And I'm, I'm restaurant. You need to start a restaurant and have on the on the hors d'oeuvres or the appetizers, creme de la crap. Yeah, there you go. Oh, sure. Hey, listen, my, Dr. Edwin Hernandez, you know, my partner over at Eagle Communications is always out there looking for business opportunity. Why do you think he brought me to handle the, the media side or media side? Don't yeah. worry. When you meet this guy, he's a classic. He can work with me. Most people can't. But he's <laughs> a good go guy. Go. I love him. Let's see. Well, the classes during the football season are allowed them to do two online classes while the season drags on. <laughs> but, by the way, number, let's get to the fourth one because I know we've gone to this thing, but it's, uh, there's another. Oh, well, anytime you get an opportunity like me, the Motor City Madmouth, living up to the name, well, it's probably worth the entertainment value. Yeah. And for all you folks out there, please subscribe to our channel. We've got one more show that we added to the list. And this is a candy. Make, make Madmouth great again <laughs> with your red hat. <laughs> That's it. There you go. No. HBO Max, the reason this is a topic is because they are now fighting. This is not just getting um, Sopranos and getting all these movies, like live movies, and getting Entourage and getting all these other shots. This isn't that, and then getting Bill Maher. This isn't just like a, a bunch of archives anymore. HBO Max is working on, and it's basically called Max now. It's working on getting live streaming sports. They are working toward that, getting ideas with that. And think about this. We have Apple TV. They have one night a week of baseball, which we're going to see more than one night a week soon. And you know that. We've got that. The, I mean, the Cubs, they are not a, the Cubs are not a, um, they don't have WGN anymore. They don't have a streaming network, but they've got Marquee, their own network. The Cubs have that. There are, and then you have all of these. Now you have these apps for all these teams in every part of the league. Every team, except for a couple of teams in all of sports, has an app. And most of the time you see it on video. See the highlights, see everything. We are not going to see terrestrial television much anymore. We're not going to see that in the next 10 years. Not much. We might still see it with the NFL. That might be the last straw to drop. Nice, not, not last straw to drop. I'm sorry. The last, what was that? What's the, what, what's the saying on that? 
You, oh, the last domino to drop? Yeah, last domino. Thank you. The last domino to fall. I'm still flying domino high here fall. at 9.08 p.m. That Eastern would time. be the last domino to fall. Would be the end. I don't. I don't know if it's that soon. I but really I'm saying ten years. I'm saying ten, twelve years. I'm not saying now. But I'm yeah. saying things are going so quickly, George. They really are. It's like oh, I know, I know. And you know, oh. uh, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the streaming services, but uh, I understand what you're saying. You know, it's more of a wave of the future type of thing. Amazon Prime. You know, I never thought Thursday Night Football was going to be exclusive to Amazon Prime, but it is. And like you mentioned, MLB with apple and their their game or two that they do a week um you know hbo max i mean obviously a lot more money is going to be dished out there for for the leagues to consider and it, 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 yeah i know what you're saying it's a wave of the future i just hope it doesn't happen very fast and the other thing is is that some of the teams are still behind the eight ball remember with these regional agreements with valley sports especially somehow the detroit tigers pistons and red wings and other cities like us have to sort this thing through and start looking at elsewhere. Illich, Mike Illich of the Red Wings and Tigers, I mean, he had talked about years ago starting his own network. Well, it never happened. I don't know what happened. Not enough money, not enough resources, not enough talent. I don't know what the case is, but they never did pursue that here in Detroit. And now you got the, the Bally, uh, you know, the whole situation with Bally going bankrupt. And, you know, there's a lot of concern out there for, for regional sports and, and streaming services. I'm not so sure that everything's going to go that way, but I, I do know what you're saying. I mean, that it seems to be the wave of the future, HBO Max, or as you call it, Max. Um, you know, they're going to broadcast uh, games sooner or later. We know that's going to happen, but I'm not a big fan of it, but I know that the younger people are. That's what they're trying to go for. They want to go for that younger audience that's more onto the streaming and more onto the, uh, you know, watching sporting events that way live. Oh, and, and remember this. I had a buddy of mine who had a, he was an old buddy of mine from school who reminded me of something a couple of years ago. He was like, this was at the time, and this is probably even less now, I, I was hating, hating, hating on the Nickelodeon thing. You know, the Nickelodeon in the playoffs, I hated on it. I admit this. I will be, and I was wrong because I did not realize it. I didn't realize it, but I was hating on it just because it's not tradition. He reminded me that back in our time when we watched it, 90% of people watched the game full, straight, all the way through. That's, you know, our age is like, this is 12 to 15 years old, whatever. The number is 53% now yeah. that do that for kids like that. So you have to get a Nickelodeon to do something like that. You to be able to watch and be able to get their attention. And I like I didn't even realize that. I thank him to this day for reminding me of that. And it's like you have to be. And now Nickelodeon's going to be the Super Bowl. And you want to know why it how it worked, how good it worked? Thirty three million people watched the horrible Bears and Saints uh, playoff game. Thirty three million watched it between CBS and um, and Nickelodeon. That's how much it worked. Which you don't see those numbers outside of a Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. It, yeah. It's like. We have the one thing we have to realize that it's not just age. We talk about the older and everything. We have to realize about the younger. It's not like the younger, like 2000s, 1998, whatever. It's 2023. Like I said, who knew the 85 Bears? I'm already the youngest that can talk about them. I'm 45 on August 24th. I'm August 24th. I'm 45 years old. I am easily the youngest. Everybody else I can talk to regularly with that is 60. Yeah. I'm 45. It's only because I can absorb things better than a lot of people, even as adults at that age. But that's the thing. Not a lot could do that. I'm talking with 60 year olds about those years. I can't talk to a 30 year old about the Bears. They've never seen, they've seen nothing but the Packers beat the crap out of them. <laughs> Which I know. I know this well. I think love's terrible, but I think love's terrible, but it won't take long for them to get a better quarterback and go beat the crap out of the Bears again if they're not careful. This is just the truth. All but, right. You know what, Jacob? Let's stay on point here a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, but the thing is, yeah, yeah. The biggest thing about it is the fact that what I meant by that is this is the era of theirs, not ours. 
HBO Max, and it's going to. There's going to be many more of these. It's not just movies anymore. It's not just anything anymore. Go to and I'm, this is part of my uh, point, Scott. And I'll go to the candy here. This is part of my point. Go to any gas station back in the day, and you would make fun of their food and get stomach aches. You go there now. It's gourmet. T- it's gourmet kitchens. <laughs> you don't go to Pepsi and Coke own these. Okay, Pepsi Coke owns um, their sodas, but they also have water, fizz water, everything. And now movies, movie st- networks have sports. These TV networks and streaming networks have movies and different things. It is spread out. It's uh, it's not our world anymore. We just have to live in it. Okay. And and Candy, what do you think about this? HBO introduced Hard Knocks. And that took off. And when that took off, they're like, hmm, maybe we need to get more into live sports. Maybe we need to get into a, take a piece of that action because Amazon Prime did and look at how they're doing. The thing that I feel bad for is the low income people that can't afford all these different streaming services because let's face it, NFL has Amazon Prime. But MLB has somebody, someone different and, you know, basketball is going to have somebody different and you're going to have to either subscribe to all these different places or you're not going to be able to watch all of them. So who is that really going to hurt? It's going to hurt the fan that doesn't can't afford to go to these games because let's face it, to go to an actual game, you're forking over a lot of money. So they're, they're going to watch it at home. But now they can't even watch it at home because... It's not free on TV or they're going to have to watch it on a delay because they can't afford the streaming services right away. That's who it's going to hurt. True. That's what, where yeah. I feel it's it's sad Very because it's, point, it's those Very families, good. you know, that can't afford all the different <laughs> streaming services. And Scott, what do you think? All right, here's the deal, okay? And I'll make this a lot shorter than the, the uh, crap. 12 or whatever you want to call it, or the, or the, uh, creme de la crap and all that business. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're okay. <laughs> all right. HBO max is heading to live sports stream. So are we, we're here sports, right? Here we are. Everybody doing it. So, you know what? Let them, but you know, the good news is for all those former ESPN announcers, they might have jobs. Somebody got hired. They're good. They're talented, right? So there, there's another pond to jump into where ESPN is, by the way, that doesn't know their identity from a crocodile and an alligator. They don't know. So the reality is everybody's doing it. That's how all there is to it. Just like we are. Streaming is fast. Everybody know. I mean, even the Pac-12 had the right idea with Apple Plus. Problem was it's $20 million versus all the money these teams are getting. Doesn't even make, make any difference. Why do you think Oregon, nice. okay, and Washington will take half the share over at the Big Ten because they know they're getting paid more than – $20 million at the other place. But everybody's going to it. That's all. One of the few short answers I'll ever have. But here we go. <laughs> and this has been an awesome show tonight. Yeah, no great to- job, guys. It really has. And I wanted to bring this part up here. We're going to have all four of us eventually do it, but this is me tonight. And I wanted to bring this. Sure. Jarrell um, Brock, he was going to be a he – he's from Quincy, Illinois. He was one of the all-time leading um, running backs for the Blue Devils. He went to Iowa State. He's right now. He's good. I believe he is a senior, and he is a he's a senior. He was ready to be to be the man for the team, be the man, the number one running back. And he just got. I saw it on our local on the Qu- local Quincy news. They talked about it. Oh no. And Jacob? the lights yeah, 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 got it, got it. So he got go. caught with an NCAA deal with the you know, with gambling, with a gambling problem. He got caught with that. He was using, I believe, his girlfriend's name to go gamble, which is also a tax thing because if you win, you have your winnings, you get taxed. It is a tax problem. He is in a lot of trouble. And this is what I have to bring up to people. This is the thing about NIL. When you don't have nil there are other everybody's going to want money and you don't have nil deals they're going to go elsewhere and considering that the nfl is working with gambling where else do you think the kids are going to go when they don't have money they're not going to accept 
the do dorm room and the three meals and the thing anymore. Not like this. So gambling's going to be it. You're going to have to watch it on. You're going to have to watch it with the thing with the NIL because, and you're going to, or you have to offer or do some kind of deal, and you don't have to get it because right now this kid's in trouble and he's probably out. I hate it for him. But when they, everybody sees money. When these kids see money all over the place with these athletes, and they get to see it on TMZ, and they see everything, and they're getting none of it. They're fighting their own. You're good. The NCAA messed up dearly, and NIL slipped in, and now they want to try to control it. That's their fault. But you're going to have to understand. You're going to see more of these until we get it settled down. Because I hate to see this for Jarrell, but we're going to see more of this because kids think they're invincible. Kids think they're invincible, and they think they can get away with anything. And they want the same money. And guess what? Our Schleister would have done the same thing with all this gambling. He already did it without all the electronics. Yeah. Just imagine that. And we're going to have to control all this. We just are. Okay. With that said, we're going to turn it over to Candy. We got to get going in a moment, though. But before, a great first act. And one of the reasons I wanted it to go a little bit longer, Jacob, because it is your first show here on our network and want to make sure that everybody knows that this is the type of show with the type of subjects you have that you can have some very, very explosive ones. And I definitely know that our first act lived up to every bit of that based on the topics that you prepared ahead. Most cases, they don't go this long, but I felt my mind as a publisher of this organization, I wanted Jacob Christner to have a great coming out party. And I know he did exactly that, but this is what you can expect live entertainment and I guarantee you, like my show in the future over at Eagle Communications, which will be the Motor City Mad Mouth show, that show will be anything but boring. And I'd like to think Pundit Pundit tonight lived up to anything but boring. So with that said, we're going to, Jacob, we'll turn over to Candy for company business, and then we can wrap this thing up. Go ahead, Candy. So if you liked this show, if you see that little red subscribe button next to George, it says, please subscribe, click it, like it. Share us with all your friends, anybody that you think would be interested in watching any of our shows. We have many shows. We have 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. We have Inside the Pigskin. We have Sports Exchange. We have No Limits. We have the Professor and the Pupil. We have The Real and the Rare. We have Fire Up, Fire Up Wisconsin, Fire Up Michigan. We have Fire Up following this tonight. Um, if you have any show ideas, you can always email us www at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. We do have a website, www.southfloridatribune.com. Please go to it. You'll find all of our broadcasts there. It'll take you over to our YouTube channel, but most importantly, subscribe because we're striving, striving for, well, we're going to go for 900 first, but we're trying to get 1,000. Eventually, our, these shows, because this is the first one, will be heard on Google, um, Apple, iHeartRadio, all of our others are already on there, but because this is the inaugural episode on uh, for Pundits Pundit on this network, it'll be the first time it takes a little bit longer to get distributed to those partners, but it will. We would love to have any ideas. Like I said, um, anyone want to contribute? We loved all the comments in the chat room. We loved everybody that was on, Denzel, Jeremy, Ralph, um, all of everybody that's participating. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you can also find me sometimes Tuesday nights on Three Chicks and a Pod or Chicks and Salsa. George, your turn. I got a book out. It's called Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air. Many of you may have heard of this plug before, but, um, you know, Scott and I, I have a long association with each other, and it started in a cramped radio booth back at Southfield, Michigan. Thank God we ran into each other and... Uh, all of that to lead up to the fact that he's in the book. I'm in the book a little bit, but it's not about us. It's about the legends that we admired. We grew up with Ernie Harwell, Ray Lane, Van Patrick, Frank Beckman, George Blaha, you know, Jim Branstadter, all these great announcers that we've worked with, Paul Woods, Ken Kell, you know, on and on and on. But Detroit is a great market. There's a link to purchase the book if you're interested at the end of my column, which is the Motor City Tribune, which is falls under the banner of South Florida Tribune. You can also reach me on LinkedIn, my name, George Icorn. 
on yahoo.com with my name, G.I. Corn at Yahoo. And also you can find me on Twitter, which is now called X at Sand G Sports 99. And um, I'm honored and pleased to be part of the show. I got to tell you guys, this has been so much fun. And what a great show you've got, Jacob. And uh, I'm, we're proud you're on our network now. That's great. And I appreciate it. And I've waited. I, I took way too dang long tonight. And I apologize, Scott. Apologize, George. I took too long. I, that's me. I do that sometimes. But I'm just going to say this quick. Jake the Pundit at Twitter, X, whatever the heck that is. Um, the, Jake the Pundit won a, the TikTok, which is growing by about 150 to 100 a day but people in the last week. So I'm starting to build people finally on that one. And I am also all these shows from Sideline Sports in here on the, between Monday and Sunday. Let me just add one thing as we wrap this puppy up here. Number one, every time I bring on a new show, the first show is usually a lot longer, and then everything falls into form time-wise. So I, I don't worry about that kind of stuff. No apology necessary, and I won't accept one that isn't necessary. Anyways, the first show is a way to get your feet wet. The second show, we pare it down a little bit to make sure everything falls into form. But this is a great show. And when the opportunity came to bring it over to our side, Sideline did an unbelievably awesome job with it. We're just glad it happened to work out where George could participate on Thursday. And I know, Ralph Williams, that you're out there paying attention. But this is going to be the great lead-in show to our show afterwards on Thursday, which is why I made the decision to bring on Pundits Fun in advance of yours. I know, Ralph... You understand it. And I know our buddy Mark Mancini does too. And the and the one thing about old media, you always want a good show to lead into another one. If you don't believe me, what, tell me why the great shows are there before the local news. And those of you that figure it out, well, I have a book coming. TBD will release the details when it comes out. Any closing thoughts? I just I said my closing thought. I yep. appreciate everybody, George. I appreciate you. Candy did awesome. We are, Thanks. we're going to, this, this thing's going to get better and better. No question about it. Denzel, we're counting on big things for you. And guess what? We're going to give you a two-week break because I'll be in Motown out there uh, w w being the Motor City Mad Mouth in the Motor City. Okay, got it. Help anybody that gets in my way there. I haven't really spent much time in there for a couple of years. So I'll let the Mo Motor City Mad Mouth out of the bag with my beautiful hats that my other half was nice enough to invest into me. Thank you, Candy. You're welcome. Thanks for letting me be a part of this inaugural show episode on the South Florida Tribune Network. No problem. Thanks. We'll see Jen. We'll see Jen eventually too. It's going to be great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't worry. I'm going to get her butt over here. Oh, Good. Sure I, will. I have no doubt about your determination. <laughs> well, right, George, night, everybody. Well, I'll Thank see you on fire up on the other end. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Good Thanks, night, everybody. Everyone.